Hello, comrades. It is I, Wolfgang, the speedrunner uh, uh, of all time. Uh, I can't wait to show you how I have improved my boss pulverizing capabilities. But first, we must learn how my training has improved such that now I can destroy trees of rocks in one hit. Along with straight up doing more damage. But be warned, the math formula is slightly uh, complex. As it involves planar damage. Wolfgang doesn't understand math, so Jake will explain it later. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. All right, we're gonna start with Wolfgang's built-in default perks and quirks before his new skill tree Then we will talk about all his new skills in his new skill tree along the way We'll describe not only what all the perks and quirks and skills do But how effective they are and how to fully utilize them is Wolfgang even better at speed running now. Let's find out Hello gamers, it is me, not Banjo the Business Pig wearing Jakey's skin, and today I have a big announcement which is not a sponsor. Yet. I am very excited to announce we're releasing our very first limited time merch ever! The Jakeosaurus desk mat. This desk mat has been in the works for almost a year now and it is finally available for purchase until the 5th of October, after which you won't be able to buy it ever again. This truly is the highest quality desk and mouse mat I've ever laid my hands on with a 4mm thickness, which most other mouse mats, including my old one, have a thickness of 2 to 3mm. Pathetic. The stitching around the outside is clean and the best part is of course the art, which was commissioned by your yours truly, depicting the Jikiosaurus character in a fantasy environment. Now, you may notice a few easter eggs related to the channel and its content in the art, but I'll leave them up to you to spot. Let me know if you manage to spot all 10 easter eggs. But if easter eggs aren't your style though, you could buy the non-easter egg version too. Both versions are available for purchase in the link in the description, but make up your mind fast because after the 5th of October, you won't be able to purchase them ever again, and when you do buy one or both of them for yourself or someone else, they will arrive before Christmas this year. So thank you so much for your support. Support. Without your support, we would have never been able to launch our very first limited time merch product, and if this goes well, we hope to do more limited time merch in the future. Like maybe even a uh, a plushie? Anyway, I, not Banjo and Jakey Skin, is leaving now. Goodbye. Man, this car's handling is something. Uh, whoa! Man, if you had a cheeky horse mouse bat, you probably would have been able to control that car. Anyway, let's talk about Wolfgang. Wolfgang has decently high stats, being 200 health, sanity, and hunger, and Wolfgang's main built-in perk is his mighty physical form. To achieve this physical form, you need to pay attention to Wolfgang's unique mighty meter, which dictates which physical form he will take. If he is 25 mightiness or less, he will be wimpy. If he is 26 to 75 mightiness, he will be normal. And if he is 76 or higher mightiness, he will become mighty. But what do these different forms mean? Starting with the worst, when Wolfgang is wimpy, he will gain a 0.75 times damage modifier. So he does 51 damage with a Dark Sword versus a normal target, whereas Wilson would deal 68 damage. That means Wimpy Wolfgang is as weak as Wes. He will also work slower than normal players. More specifically, he works with a 0.75 times work efficiency modifier, so it takes him 20 swings to knock down a fully grown tree, whereas it takes Wilson 15 swings. But Wimpy Wolfgang will use less durability on the tool per action, such that Wimpy Wolfgang with an axe will do the same amount of work as Wilson with the same axe, just Wimpy Wolfgang will take longer to do the same amount of work. Normal Wolfgang is the same as a normal character. He deals normal damage and works normally. But Mighty Wolfgang is where the good stuff begins. Mighty Wolfgang will gain a 2 times damage multiplier to his physical damage, enabling you to do this kind of damage using blow darts, spicy vodka jelly, and Abigail versus a wet bear drink. Wow, that's a lot of damage. Anyway, Wolfgang will also complete work in less actions. Uh, more specifically, he has a 1.5 times work efficiency modifier, but will consume proportionally more durability from the tool relative to the extra work done. So like before, Mighty Wolfgang with a pickaxe will do the same amount of work as Wilson with a pickaxe, just Mighty Wolfgang will do it in less swings and therefore less time. But Mighty Wolfgang buffing his working capabilities isn't limited to wood cutting and mining. While rowing, he will row with an efficiency modifier of 1.33 times, so he will row with his mighty strength, causing you to accelerate faster than Wilson using the same ore. Also, while Mighty, Wolfgang by default has a small 1% chance to one hit whatever he's working on, like chopping a tree, mining a rock, or fighting deer cl- wait, wait, no that's wrong. It only works while working, not during combat. Unlucky. Anyway, Mighty Wolfgang will also ignore speed penalties of various items and interactions, such as wearing marble armor, the piggyback, and while carrying heavy items such as the shadow pieces. These all usually induce a speed reduction, but Wolfgang ignores it because he is strong. Anyway, cool, so being Mighty is very epic, but in the time it took me to explain all of this to you, your Mighty Media has drained to zero! 
Yes, your mighty meter drains slowly depending on your hunger. Ideally, you'll keep your hunger above 150, which will result in the minimum mightiness drain of 48 per day. But if your hunger is 100 to 150, your mightiness will drain by 96 per day. And this scales all the way down to if you're starving at zero hunger, you will lose 768 mightiness per day. So how do we gain mightiness? Well, fighting and doing any kind of work will raise your mightiness decently, but the fastest and most preferable ways to raise your mightiness in a pinch is either using Wolfgang's Mighty Gym or his Dumbbells. But let's start with the Mighty Gym. The Mighty Gym can only be built by Wolfgang and by default comes with two sacks of potatoes on it. After getting on the gym and beginning to lift, each lift will raise your mightiness by four. How you play this gym minigame is by clicking or pressing spacebar when the red indicator hovers over the highlighted part of the indication bar. This will give you the highest amount of mightiness per cycle. One cycle being the indicator traveling from one end of the indication bar to the other end. If you try to click multiple times too fast, you'll slip and fall and not gain any mightiness, while also wasting some time. Also, while on the mighty gym, regardless if you're lifting or not, your hunger will drain at an accelerated rate depending on the items that you are lifting. So the potato sack items are not so good, as you'll only gain full mightiness per lift. Instead, you can remove them from your mighty gym, defeat any boss, grab their figure sketch that they drop, feed the figure sketch to a potter's wheel, and using cut stone, moon glass, or marble, and some rocks, craft yourself two of the boss statues of your choice, and then put them on the Mighty Gym. Doing this will effectively upgrade your Mighty Gym as you will now gain 10 mightiness per perfect lift. A perfect lift is clicking when the indicator is hovering over the white part of the indication bar. This will allow you to go from 0 mightiness to 100 mightiness in about 12 seconds. But that includes the time it takes to jump onto the Mighty Gym, otherwise if you ignore that you do about one lift per second. You can craft a non-boss statue such as the Cornucopia, which you can craft with the Potter's Wheel by default without using any figure sketches, and two of these Cornucopia Cooper statues are better than the two potato sacks, but still not as good as two of any boss statue. Uh, here's a little chart comparing all the different statues with each other, in the context of how much uh, mightiness you gain uh, per lift, yes. So that's the mighty gym, but it does have limitations, as you have to build it, and it is not mobile. But what is mobile is Wolfgang's dumbbells. Wolfgang can craft a few dumbbells by default, one of which he spawns in with, these dumbbells being rock, gold, marble, and gem. The better dumbbells are more expensive to craft than the bad ones, but also get progressively better at raising your mightiness faster. But it's a little more intricate than just a better dumbbell equal mightiness go up faster, as the gold dumbbell is just as good as the gem bell for raising your mightiness between 0 and 25, but once you're above 25, the gold dumbbell is worse than the gem bell. But the marble dumbbell is just as good as the gem bell to raise your mightiness between 0 and 75, but then finally the gem bell is the fastest dumbbell at raising your mightiness above 75. Here's a table showing the mightiness gain in each physical form for each dumbbell, uh, you can look at this rather than me talking about it. What this basically boils down to is the marble dumbbell is good enough to get you into your mighty form, where you will then start fighting or working, which will continue to raise your mightiness above 76. But that's not all. Uh, while Wolfgang is working, fighting, or holding a dumbbell while moving, his mightiness drain will be paused. So even if you're starving, which would normally induce a mightiness drain of 768 per day, as long as you're working or fighting, your mightiness won't drop until you stop doing the task for about 4 seconds, at which point the mightiness drain will resume. And while holding a dumbbell and moving, but then you stop moving or you unequip the dumbbell, it takes a shorter 1.5 seconds before your mightiness drain will resume. Now let's directly compare the Mighty Gym with boss statues versus the best dumbbell. Uh, spoilers, uh, the Mighty Gym will get you to 100 mightiness a lot faster. To be exact, it takes the gym 12 seconds from 0 to 100 mightiness, whereas the gym bell takes about 21 seconds, so the gym is 75% faster. But this was both the gym and the dumbbell starting to lift at the same time. So now let's conduct a little experiment where we will use the base setup that we usually use, and in this scenario you're about to leave your base but you have zero mightiness. So Wolfgang 1 must go to the Mighty Gym and lift, whereas Wolfgang 2 simply needs to equip their dumbbell and begin lifting. Once the Wolfgangs reach 100 mightiness, they must reach the marker outside the base. May the test begin. Oh, waiting for the test to end, you know, you may as well just go check out that mouse mat that I was talking about at the start of the video. Um, you know, I use it every day now. That's my, that's my personal mouse mat that I use now. Remember, it's only available until October 5th. So yeah, go check it out. Oh, the test is about to end. Um, alright, well, uh, so, as we can see, the Mighty Gym is superior. It took Wolfgang 1 19 seconds to reach the outside base marker with 100 mightiness, and Wolfgang 2 took 24 seconds to do the same. So what this comes down to is use the mighty gym if it's convenient, otherwise if you're out and about, use the dumbbell of your choice to get just inside mightiness, like 80 mightiness before you begin fighting or working. Or just use dumbbells all the time and completely ignore the mighty gym. But one thing dumbbells can do that the mighty gym cannot is 
you can throw dumbbells while you're mighty. <laughs> Which is goofy and stupid, but they have decent range and damage with a very small area of effect. This area of effect is a half a tile radius around where the dumbbell hits the ground. And they have some travel time, which varies. You guess that the further away you are from the target, the longer the travel time of the dumbbell would be, but um, uh, uh, oddly, uh, no. When we tested, the dumbbell hits the ground the fastest when you're standing at the maximum dumbbell throwing range of two tiles, taking about 51 frames from entering the air to causing damage on the ground. But when stepping forward to one and a half tiles, one tile, on half a tile, the air time of the dumbbell increased up to 67 frames, so notably up to 25% slower than being at max range because seemingly it tries to balance the distance of the throw by giving the throw more height, but this results in an increased travel time despite being closer to the target. Anyway, here's a table of the dumbbell's damage when thrown. Note that the dumbbells actually do half the damage on this table, but you can only throw the dumbbells while mighty and therefore you deal double damage, so they deal the damage displayed on the table. They're also affected by other physical damage multipliers such as spicy Volgo jelly, so you can make the gem bell do 255 damage against a wet target with spicy Volko jelly. Wolfgang suffers 10% extra sanity drain from all sources, so you may be fighting more nightmare creatures than normal. Separate from this, Wolfgang also suffers a greater than 10% extra sanity drain from evening and night, inducing a sanity drain of 6.25 per minute. Except if there's a follower or teammate within a 4 tile radius around Wolfgang, then the sanity drain is reduced to 5.5 per minute, whereas a normal character would only receive a sanity drain of 5 per minute. To be more in depth with Wolfgang's extra sanity drain, he'll always receive 10% more sanity drain from insanity or but that modifier can be changed from 10% up to 100%, depending on how many friends and enemies are nearby. To be exact, I tried to figure out the sanity modifier formula, but couldn't reverse engineer it on stream, so I looked at the code and this is the formula. So replacing the numbers with variables in a scenario where there is one Deerclops, four hounds, two players, and one friendly pigman nearby to Wolfgang, we get this. So if an epic creature, so a boss, like Deerclops, is nearby, it counts as three points. Every other hostile creature counts as one point. Then players and friendly followers count as a negative one point. Add these all together, it gives us 4 in this scenario. Then we multiply that by um, 1 divided by 13. This gives us 0 0.307 with a bunch of numbers after it. Then we add the 1.1 from the start of the formula, so it equals about 1.4 with a bunch of numbers. So our sanity modifier is 1.4. Uh, to be exact, it's actually 1.407692307769. To show this sanity drain modifier in action, Deerclops' default sanity drain is 400 per minute. Multiply this by the 1.4 and lots of numbers equals 563 point uh, lots of numbers, a sanity drain per minute, uh, which is equivalent to 9.3 lots of numbers a sanity drain per second, which means we lose 200 sanity in 21.3 lots of numbers seconds, or 21 seconds and about 18.6 frames. And that is exactly what happens in this clip. As a comparison, Wilson standing next to Deerclops will drain all 200 sanity in exactly 30 seconds. Anyway, I delved way too deep into this mechanic, let's move on. Wolfgang's hunger modifier, while normal and mighty, is a normal one times modifier, uh, but while wimpy, it's reduced to 0.75 times. Wolfgang, while mighty, has a higher cold resistance of 30, the equivalent of half a pair of rabbit earmuffs, but at the cost of having 30 negative summer insulation, reducing something like the Eyebrella's summer insulation from 240 to 210, meaning Mighty Wolfgang using the Eyebrella will overheat faster than someone like Wilson using the Eyebrella. In the scenario where Mighty Wolfgang is using an Eyebrella and starting at 25 degrees body temperature, it will take him exactly 6 minutes and 49 frames before Mighty Wolfgang will begin taking damage from overheating, whereas Wilson with an Eyebrella starting at 25 degrees body temperature will take 6 minutes, 45 seconds, and 46 frames before he will also begin taking damage from overheating. So Wilson lasted 12.5% longer than Wolfgang. Uh, yeah, temperature mechanics, cool! Also, while we're talking about temperature, people seem to be confused when I say that character winter insulation negatively affects that character during summer. So allow me to explain, as temperature mechanics require a video for themselves, so I don't really dive too deep into them in videos, but let's run through some quick examples to explain what I mean. If a character like Woody, who has a beard which provides winter insulation, is in summer and tries to cool down using a luxury fan, he will do so slower than a non-bearded character. More specifically, Specifically, while wearing no winter insulation, the luxury fan reduces temperature by 50 in the right circumstances. But with Woody's beard having the small winter insulation it provides, the luxury fan reduces his temperature by only 20 degrees. This is a very popular method for cooling down and it is drastically affected by winter insulation. Though this beard or any other winter insulation does not matter if you're using a cool thermal stone to reduce your temperature, as the thermal stone will always try to pull your temperature towards its temperature and it has its own insulation and ignores yours. So if you're holding a thermal stone that's 20 degrees in summer, your character's temperature won't naturally go above that 20 degrees regardless of the winter insulation that you're wearing. Though I will say reducing your temperature with ambient methods such as an endothermic fire during summer, winter insulation has absolutely no effect. An example being a woody with a beard, beefalo hat and puffy vest will cool down just as fast as a naked Wilson next to an endothermic fire during summer. Anyway, I hope that cleared that up. Finally, Wolfgang's favourite food is cooked potato, which is like the best favourite food as a favourite food adds a flat 15 hunger bonus to the food, so the food being a single ingredient food makes it easy to get the 15 flat hunger bonus from the food. Food Food, food, 
good food. <laughs> so a total hunger of 40 along with 20 health. Now it is time to move on to Wolfgang's skill tree. We will see what the skills do in depth and decide how they are best used before I finally give you Wolfgang's recommended skill tree. What's up guys, it's your boy Banjo, the business pig. Wait, didn't you crash your car and die while disguised as Jakey like 12 minutes and 20 seconds ago? Me? In a car? Nah, that couldn't have been me. I crashed my last car in the Final Fantasy ad like four months ago. And the rental company hasn't given me a new car since. <laughs> anyway, Wolfgang, look over there. See that Wilson? He's fishing. Can you believe that? Uh, uh, you, you want to fish too, right? Uh, d uh, no, fishing is uh, really a, sl a slow way course, to get Of course, Wolfgang. Food. Well, don't worry. I've got the game for you. Call of the Wild, the Angler TM. In this game, you will be at one with nature, wrenching fish out of their natural habitat with whatever kind of customizable abomination you made and calling it a character. In real life, I used to fish when I was small and stupid and even when I was a child. And I gotta say, this game is extremely accurate to real life fishing when it comes to the fishing equipment and fishing mechanics. They're all done very well. Though in real life, you don't get a sound indicator when a fish bites like in Call of the Wild, the Angler TM. Anyway, after fishing for a short while and forgetting the controls to pull my fishing rod back out, which was the one key by the way, there was a map marker 1.5 kilometers away. What am I doing using kilometers? For the Americans watching, uh, 1.5 kilometers is about 16,872.89 Big Macs. So instead of actually walking or running 1.5 kilometers, I instead chose to drown myself, but then I rented a vehicle seemingly for free and very calmly drove it to my destination. Oh, I lied. I crashed the car so many times, but like my love for Charlie, the car could not be broken until I waterboarded it using the entire volume of an entire lake. Okay, let me uh, check what the developers wanted me to talk about uh, for this ad. One second. Um, all right. Yeah, the game is single player and multiplayer for up to 11 people. It's available on like everything, Xbox Series X, Xbox One, PS5, PS4, and PC, and it offers full cross-play support. There are all kinds of diverse fish in the game, along with a leveling up and challenge system for you and your equipment, along with earning money to purchase new equipment and improve your existing equipment. And the developers have been listening to their community and improving the game based on feedback, which can be seen in the recent reviews on Steam being mostly positive. So click oh. the link in the description to check out the game on Steam if you're interested, and thanks to Call of the Wild, the Angler TM, for sponsoring this video. See Wolfgang, isn't fishing just the best? I, uh, I have to get back to making the skill tree video. First, we have Chore Workout Tier 1, 2, and 3. These skills increase your default crit chance while mighty from 1% to 5, 10, and 15%. The crit chance rolls every time you do work, like do a single chop or a single swing with a pickaxe, and when you do crit, the work will finish so you'll break the boulder or chop down the tree along with hearing a satisfying ping sound effect indicating that you did a critical strike. But let's analyze how useful and effective this really is. The more actions it takes to break an object, the more effective this critical strike is. But by how much? I think you'll be surprised. It's time to... Test crit chance versus rocks with gold pickets. Sorry that I yelled that, but for whatever reason, I wrote that all down in caps. Anyway, I did a poopy on stream test with a sample size of only 88 swings of a pickaxe, which, as I was reviewing the script, thought, gross. Tiny sample size. So I broke out the Excel spreadsheet and started trying to calculate the cumulative effectiveness of the mighty chore skills. Um, but I couldn't quite figure out the formula because cumulative probability with exponentially increasing effectiveness is hard. So I did the only thing left to do. Fill up my inventory and a Krampus sack with luxury pickaxes. 30 of them, totaling 2,640 mighty swings. And then went to town on a stack of 2,000 boulders. After speeding up the world and going AFK for many, many minutes, I came back and counted the remaining boulders, 1,334. So we broke 666 boulders, with 30 pickaxes with no skills, just Wolfgang's mighty work and a 1% crit chance. Which means our 1% critical chance effectively turned our 2640 swings into doing the same damage as 2664 swings, or a 0.91% increase in damage done to the boulders. Wow. Uh, anyway, that test by itself doesn't prove the point I'm trying to make. So then what I did was this whole test again, but with 15% crit chance. Uh, and then I repeated those last two experiments, but against science machines with hammers, tall evergreens with luxury axes, living trees with luxury axes, crystal outcrops with luxury pickaxes, and finally dreadstone pillars with bright shade smashers. And after hours of testing and inputting all the data, we can see the point I've been trying to prove since the start, which is, the more actions it takes to complete a task, so for example, 10 chops to fell a tree, the more effective the 15% critical chances. Um, here's the raw stats table. Um, it's ugly, I'm sorry, and I localized the sample size to using 30 of each tool, except tools have different durability, so the durability sample size changes per test, going from 1500 actions with hammers to 8000 and 10 actions.
sections with luxury axes. Oops, anyway, this is where I made like four different tables which basically say the same thing, so I'm gonna skip them and the four paragraphs I've wrote in the script explaining them and simply jump to the last table which explains what we're seeing in the simplest way. Here is the simple chart showing the average work effectiveness multiplier where you can see trends for each character in each scenario. As you can see, the more actions you need to finish a task, the higher the effectiveness of the crit chance, indicated by the average work multiplier written as a percentage multiplier. The most extreme example being against a dreadstone pillar. Wolfgang's work actions are eight times more effective on average than Wilson's since Wilson requires 50 swings no matter what, whereas one Wolfgang critical strike would topple the pillar. Uh, you'll notice that the mighty Wolfgang with 1% critical chance doesn't continue to trend downward once we get to the dreadstone pillar. Uh, that's because Wolfgang's mighty work modifier doesn't get applied to versus dreadstone pillars, so it takes him and Wilson 50 non-critical strikes to break it. Though it does trend down when he has 15% critical strike as doing 50 strikes without performing a critical strike would have a 0.03% chance of happening. So the pillars will probably collapse to a critical strike and not because Wolfgang reached 50 actions to actually break it. Anyway, that explains my point. The more actions it takes to finish a task, the more effective the critical hit chance. That's enough XL gaming. Until later. Also, very quickly, you used to be able to crit things like the dreadstone outcrop with the incorrect tool to break it. But then they patched it, so now you cannot crit the outcrop. Sad face. Which makes this next note I took during testing very redundant. You can crit things that you normally do not do damage to, such as the dreadstone butt plug. So yeah, uh, <laughs> that doesn't work anymore. Uh, though Wolfgang can crit while mining the marble off of the Nightmare Werepig pillars, but you cannot crit the pillars into shaking or activating to spawn the Nightmare Werepig. There are some other things which you might suspect you can crit, and you can, such as the Bee Queen Hive and Crystal Outcrops from Lunar Rifts. Basically anything that you can normally hammer, mine, and chop, you can crit. There may be some exceptions which I couldn't find, and if I missed any, be sure to let me know in the comments. Next is Gym Mastering. This skill will complete the Mighty Gym minigame automatically for you, and after testing, it doesn't complete the minigame nor increase your mightiness any faster or more efficiently than you can do yourself. Unless, of course, you're failing any of the lifts. So this perk just saves you having to interact with the minigame while on the gym. Uh, so I wouldn't use this perk as the point could be used on a skill which would give you an in-game advantage. Next is the Coaching Whistle. Initially, I thought this was a very simple piece of equipment, but after diving into the mechanics, testing, and eventually uh, just looking at the code. We figured out exactly what it does and how exactly it works. You can craft this whistle and then blow on it while and only while Wolfgang is in normal physical form. If you try to blow on it while Wimpy or Mighty, the effect doesn't work. And if you become Wimpy or Mighty while you're coaching, the effect is stopped and you must become normal again and then blow the whistle again. After blowing the whistle, Wolfgang enters a coaching state. While in this state, you can continue doing anything you want, like fighting or working. Doing that won't stop the coaching state. In the coaching state, Wolfgang will seemingly randomly call out encouraging words for any followers of Wolfgang or any followers of other players in a range around Wolfgang. This range is pretty much your entire screen. It's a 6.25 tile radius around Wolfgang. But if there is a player who has followers like Wurt and her Merms, the following Merms themselves and Wurt have to be in range of Wolfgang when the coaching trigger happens. If Wurt is outside of the range but Merms are inside the range, they will not be buffed. Anyway, the actual buff of the whistle is that while followers are affected by it, they deal double damage for 10 seconds. Along with players within range gaining a plus 5 flat sanity if their sanity is less than 75% of their maximum. You can tell when followers are buffed because they will cheer and then have a sparkly effect around them until the buff wears off. Wow, double damage sounds good, right? Well, uh, after testing, this whistle doesn't seem as good as I initially thought. This is due to uptime. In that Wolfgang will buff the followers, then this double damage buff will last for 10 seconds, and then it wears off. Then Wolfgang would sometimes refresh the buff instantly, but other times would take 30 seconds to refresh the buff. So we did a bit more testing and discovered that Wolfgang seems to refresh the buff anywhere between 10 and 40 seconds after he initially buffed followers around him. So we delved into the code to see what's really going on, and uh, we discovered exactly what we concluded during testing, uh, which is after Wolfgang coaches, the game chooses a number between 0 and 30 and then adds 10 to it. This is the time in seconds until the next time Wolfgang will coach again. This means if the game randomly chooses 0 then adds 10, you will coach as soon as the initial coaching buff wears off. But if the game chooses 30 then adds 10 to it, the initial coaching buff will wear off, then Wolfgang won't buff the followers for another 30 seconds. This means the uptime for the double damage buff can be anywhere from 100% if Wolfgang refreshes the buff as soon as it expires, down to 25% if Wolfgang waits 30 seconds between buffing the followers. But if we take an average roll of the random aspect of the calculation between 0 and 30 being 15, add the 10, this gives us 25 seconds between coaching buffs. And the coaching buff lasts for 10 seconds, so we'd simply do 10 divided by 25 which gives us 0.4 or 40%. So on average, the coaching whistle has an uptime of 40%. So double damage, 40% 
percent of the time. But this doesn't account for the coaching animation, which all the followers will stop and cheer, which could interrupt and delay their upcoming attack. So it may be less than 40 percent. Anyway, the coaching whistle doesn't sound as good now, but it's still decent since it's so cheap. Let's run through some examples why. If you have 10 Merm guards while the Merm King is alive, they have a normal DPS of 166.6. You could build four more Merm fortifications to raise the DPS potential to 233.3 or 40 percent more. Or a much cheaper alternative would be to hire a Wolfgang to coach the 10 Merm guards. This way you gain the average 40 percent DPS potential will increase to match the average DPS of 14 Merm guards. But the downside is you don't increase the health pool as you still only have 10 Merm guards with 660 health each. This doesn't matter if the boss that deals air effect damage the Merms will probably get slaughtered anyway. But if you're fighting a single target boss, this is slightly more effective. Since using the coaching whistle rather than recruiting the equivalent DPS potential in more bodies is that if 10 Merm guards are being buffed and one of them dies, you lose 10% of your total followers DPS. Whereas if you had 14 unbuffed Merms and one of them dies, you lose 7.14% of your total DPS since the buffed Merms are doing more damage individually than unbuffed. This of course is a lot more effective if you had say 50 Merm guards. Wolfgang would raise the DPS of these 50 Merm guards to an equivalent of 70 Merm guards. That's a lot cheaper than building 20 more Merm fortifications. This is just something to keep in mind as this whistle does have its uses if you need more follower DPS, but you don't have the infrastructure, resources, or capacity to actually get more followers. And when coaching a large number of followers, they don't seem to all get the coaching buff all at the same time. Some receive it instantly, while others receive it a few seconds later. The buffs are independent, so even if a merm receives a buff two seconds later than the first merm, they both still get the full 10 seconds of double damage. This potentially wastes a second or two of the buff though, if Wolfgang will refresh his buff 10 seconds after the first buff. But oh well. Coaching works on Maxwell's Shadow Puppets, which do have a maximum capacity of how many you can summon. Also, during testing, we discovered that if Wolfgang dies while in the coaching state, he'll continue to coach while he is dead, which I think is really funny. <laughs> as you can see, Wolfgang died, but as long as I'm in range of Wurt and the Merms, they're still getting the buff while I'm dead. This might get fixed, but I thought I'd mention it because it still works. You can also continue coaching even if you don't have the whistle. Uh, the whistle puts you in the coaching state, but you don't need it unless you exit the coaching state by becoming mighty, weepy, or blowing the whistle again. Despite all this explanation about uptime, uh, th there's a method where you can achieve very close to 100% uptime shown to me by Alcon Chloe on Discord. Thanks, gamer. So here's the method to get 100% uptime on the whistle. Below the whistle to enter the coaching state, then wait for Wolfgang to actually coach the followers. Then when Wolfgang finishes his coaching animation, blow the whistle to exit the coaching state, then immediately blow it again to re-enter the coaching state. Seven seconds later, Wolfgang will buff the followers around him less than a second after their buff wears off. How this works is due to a little oversight in the code, which is, when you enter the coaching state for the first time, the countdown for your first coach is seven seconds, not a random number between zero and thirty plus ten. So if you coach your followers, then wait three seconds, which just so happens to line up with the coaching animation, then blow the whistle to exit and re-enter your coaching state, the buff will have less than seven seconds left and you will buff again in seven seconds. If you time this wrong and reset your coaching state too early though, the game will try to trigger a coaching event, but see this is your first coach and that there are buffed followers nearby, so it resets your coaching cooldown to 0 to 30 seconds plus 10. So uh, yeah, probably a bug, but does require a bit more effort and concentration to do, so I wouldn't be surprised if Clay left this in the game. Very cool. Leg Day is a skill which simply increases Wolfgang's normal physical form movement speed by 10%. This might sound very good, but if you're playing Wolfgang, you're probably going to be mighty almost all the time for the double damage. But not only that, if you're playing as Wolfgang, you will also be mighty so that you can use items like the Marble Suit and Piggyback without their movement speed restriction. The movement speed reduction from the items would be greater than the movement speed buff while being normal. This is super noticeable with the Marble Suit as it lowers movement speed by 30%, calculating it out 1 multiplied by 1.1 multiplied by 0.7 equals 0.77, but the Piggyback only reduces speed by 10%, so the calculation if you had leg day with the piggyback in normal form would be 1 multiplied by 1.1 multiplied by 0.9, which results in a movement speed of 0.99. Technically slower than Mighty Wolfgang with the piggyback as his speed would be 1.0, but the difference is not noticeable, only being 1% slower. Most of the time in my runs with Wolfgang, I am almost always mighty, but this skill is nice since if you don't need to be mighty, you can just let your mightiness drain to normal physical form and you gain some speed. Or your speed will just stay the same as Mighty Wolfgang if you're using a piggyback. So it either gives you speed or lets you sustain mighty speed with the piggyback, but without being mighty, so it saves you time from lifting. And if you do decide to use this skill, at Vlasipolitis A in the comments mentioned that if you keep your hunger low so your mightiness drains fast, but hold a dumbbell while running around so your mightiness doesn't drain, once you're done fighting, you'll lose your mighty state fast to gain the 10% movement speed back faster than if you had high hunger. Thanks for the tip, gamer. Dumbbell Developer. This skill allows Wolfgang to craft three new dumbbells, starting with the Thermal Dumbbell, which is exactly like a thermal stone while in your inventory, in that it stores heat or cold and will slowly lose it while keeping you warm or cold, depending on the thermal dumbbell temperature. You can also of course lift with it to increase your mightiness, which costs a little bit of durability, and it only increases your
your mightiness as well as the rock dumbbell, which is nish segut. Also, while holding it, it does not influence your temperature. So even if it's warm in winter, but you're holding it, you'll lose temperature until you take it off and put it in your inventory or backpack. Though it loses temperature just as fast whether it's being held or in your inventory. As for the thermal dumbbell versus the thermal stone, they are exactly the same. <laughs> it gains and loses temperature as fast as a thermal stone while also providing the same amount of light in darkness which dims the colder the thermal object gets. And there's no funky interaction by having both the thermal bell and the thermal stone in your inventory at the same time. So what's the point of this dumbbell? Well, it's kind of a two-in-one deal, a thermal stone with a dumbbell, except unfortunately the dumbbell side of the deal isn't very good. So it's up to you how useful this is. I personally don't think it's super useful. It saves one inventory slot at the price of Wild Yorg on the go. You can't raise your mightiness as fast as a better dumbbell like the Marbell, which is my personal choice. Uh, I wouldn't use the thermal dumbbell, but it's up to you. Next is the fire and ice dumbbell. What they do is when you lift them, they're as good as a gem bell. Cool. Increasing your mightiness by five per second without a account for the physical form transformation animations. And then when you throw them, they do the same damage as the gem bell being 85, but they have a special effect. The red dumbbell will unleash a burst of flames and the ice dumbbell will cause an instance of freezing around it where it lands. These dumbbells are top tier uh, stupid and silly, but they are fun to play with. In practical scenarios, they don't have much use since having to throw a dumbbell to freeze an enemy, you risk just missing entirely or not freezing them in one throw as the ice dumbbell is the same as two shots from an ice staff. Not to mention, you lose 3% durability of the dumbbell every time you throw it. The fire dumbbell, when thrown and land spews out large flames, more specifically three of them which last 8 to 10 seconds ish. Uh, let me know if you come up with a way to use these dumbbells in some kind of productive way. I could see the fire dumbbell being used in kind of a fire farm. Uh, for the ice dumbbell, if you time it right, I guess you can throw out a horde of enemies chasing you to freeze them. But you could also do the same with the fire dumbbell to make the enemies panic due to the fire damage. But if you want to kill hordes of mobs with dumbbells, I would recommend the next two skills. Heavy hitter tier 1 and 2. Tier 1 grants 50% extra damage from thrown dumbbells and tier 2 increases that to 100% extra damage from thrown dumbbells. With this extra damage, you'll be able to one-hit most small mobs in a small area of effect. So being chased by a horde of small monkeys, time your throw right and you can one-hit a bunch of them with a dumbbell. This is not super practical because, as we said before, you can miss. The area of effect isn't very big, so you may not kill all the enemies, and you have to go back on yourself to grab the dumbbell you just threw, as you'll be running straight into the horde you just tried to unalive. But it is a rare and cheap source of range damage. Though the DPS is not super notable, uh, but l let's calculate the DPS anyway. <laughs> Assuming the DPS is cycling through three gem bells, then picking them up and then throwing them again repeatedly without cutting, you may to achieve a DPS of a uh, 122.7. Just as a comparison, Mighty Wolfgang with a Dark Sword without dodging has a DPS of 272. So, um, bad DPS. Anyway, with the dumbbell damage skills, this is how much each dumbbell does when thrown, so you know which tier of dumbbell you'll need to deal so much damage. With an example of a mob that that dumbbell would one hit. That's enough about lobbing dumbbells. Okay, okay, wait one more thing, except this time it's like actually meta. Probably the best use for the ice dumbbell is you can cycle through three ice dumbbells versus a proud crab king using a total of six ice dumbbells to constantly freeze and damage him. Initially, I thought this was a gimmick that my Twitch chat told me about, but then I tested it. And um, yeah, you literally need six ice bells and a boat. That's it. As long as you don't mess up and take too long to throw the three ice dumbbells, then the crab king will always be stuck trying to summon his first round of claws once he hits around 20,000 health. And he always prioritizes doing this over everything else, so he never attempts to heal even if he has very low health. Using this method, the kill time is like under 4 minutes, which is insane, because you save a lot of time and resources because you don't need to prep any boards, weather panes, or ice staffs, so this is probably a better strategy in a speedrun for Wolfgang, which I will probably be using. Thanks, Twitch chat. Push the limits tier 1 through 5. These allow you to increase your maximum mightiness from 100 through to 150 at increments of 10 with each tier. But with this skill active, you can only push your mightiness past 100 by using the mighty gym. Trying to push past 100 with anything else simply won't increase your mightiness. So using dumbbells won't push you past 100, nor will dumbbells increase your mightiness while you are above 100. But running around while holding a dumbbell while above 100 mightiness does stop your mightiness from draining. Also, while working does not push your mightiness above 100, what it does do is if you are working while your mightiness is above 100, it stops your mightiness from draining until you stop working for 4 seconds like before. So even if you're starving and should be losing 768 mightiness per day, you won't be losing any because you're working. The mightiness drain when above 100 mightiness is the same as if it were below 100, as it scales completely with hunger and those rates have not changed. This is a very useful perk as before you leave your base, use your mighty gym to get yourself to 150 mightiness, then as long as you keep your hunger at or above 150, you only lose 48 mightiness per day. So it will take just over one and a half days before your mightiness hits 75 without any other boosts to your mightiness, which is exactly 12 and a half minutes. 12 and a half minutes of uninterrupted mightiness. I think this could save a lot of time trying to raise mightiness before and during fights and in day to day running around while using the piggyback or marble armor. Highly recommended if it fits your playstyle. You probably think 
think we're going to be doing this section next, but we're actually going to be doing the affinity section before that because, uh, uh, we, uh, trust me, we need to cover the affinities first for this other section to make more sense. So, to the affinity section. Wolfgang's affinity with Shadow or Luna. Both affinities are simply ramping damage bonuses to either Luna aligned enemies for the Shadow affinity or Shadow aligned enemies for the Luna affinity. Tier 1 giving 10%, Tier 2 giving 20%, and Tier 3 giving 30% damage. But which affinity is better? Well, first of all, adding a 1.3 times damage multiplier by using the Shadow uh, affinity against the Celestial Champion, you can blow dart with Spicy Volco Jelly and Abigail's Vex. 858 damage, which is uh, 1,716 DPS? Yes, I got it right, yes. I didn't even have that bit in the script. Technically, all Lunar bosses' health combined in a boss run have a higher health pool than all of the Shadow enemies. Uh, all the Lunar aligned enemies currently in the game add up to 60,000 health, being proud of crafting in all three Celestial Champion phases, while all the Shadow aligned bosses' health add up to 45,400, being Fuel Weaver, the Shadow Pieces, Agent Guardian Phase 2, and the Nightmare Wear Pick. So technically, you get more damage against bosses using the Shadow Affinity. But I would argue that the Lunar alignment so up to 30% extra damage versus shadow enemies is more useful. Because what's one enemy that will always follow you and fight you no matter where you go? Uh, other than Luna Island and other places with uh, Lunacy rather than Sandy. That, that's right, shadow creatures! This 30% damage buff applies against shadow creatures. So I would argue regardless of the boss's total health pool of shadow versus Luna, I would pick Luna because I am fighting nightmare creatures a lot. But it's up to you. Anyway, since Wolfgang's final perks are simply damage multipliers versus shadow or Luna, the default 10% damage you get from aligning with Luna or shadow does not apply. But what does apply is the 10% damage reduction you get with the side that you side with. By picking the Illuminate Affinity, you gain 10% damage reduction from Lunar aligned enemies, and for picking Shadow, you gain 10% damage reduction from Shadow enemies. Next we have, oh no, Planar damage. So this is where things are gonna get a little complicated. Being, calculating damage with literally the most amount of damage multipliers, including planar damage, and yes, that's why we did the affinity section first, as it is a damage multiplier, which will affect our calculations in this section. First, let's explain what planar damage and defense is, in case you don't know or haven't seen the woody video where I explain the planar damage. But if you have seen the woody guide, don't worry. This will be a shorter explanation as we're not dealing with the Wermoose's planar mechanics. So let's start with planar defense enemies. These planar defense enemies will run your damage you try to deal to them through this formula. While this formula it does in English is it reduces your physical damage and reduces it more the higher the physical damage is. Here's a chart to help visualize how it affects physical damage the higher the physical damage gets. Hitting a planar defense enemy for 10 physical damage will actually do 8.8 .8 damage to them, whereas hitting them for 600 physical damage will actually deal 166.6 .6 damage to them. So as you can see, the higher damage you do, the more the damage gets reduced. Okay, cool. Now, at the end of the formula, you can see planar damage is simply added to the final damage. So planar damage pierces planar defense enemies. It does not get reduced. Very simple and very cool. Planar damage also has interactions with physical damage reduction in that it just completely pierces it. Hitting a damage dummy with a football helmet as normal Wolfgang with a dark sword, you deal 13.6 damage. But give Wolfgang a Shadow Reaper which deals 38 physical and 18 planar damage, suddenly the dummy will take 25.6 damage, since only the physical aspect of the weapon damage is reduced by 80%, and the planar damage completely pierces the physical damage reduction. That's that interaction, but the interaction extends to players too. So if you are hit by an enemy that deals planar damage, such as this Ink Blight enemy, it would normally deal 35 physical and 20 planar damage, but while wearing a football helmet, you receive 7 damage from the physical damage, and 20 planar damage will pierce your football helmet, causing you to take 27 damage in total. Cool and simple. Okay, next is planar defense armor. We're almost done, I swear. Planar defense armor is different from planar defense enemies. Planar defense enemies run your damage through the formula we mentioned before, whereas planar armor provides physical damage reduction and a flat planar damage reduction. So wearing a bright shade helmet and being hit by the same ink blight, the 35 physical damage hits me for 7, the same as the football helmet. But then the 20 planar damage is reduced by a flat 10 by the Bright Shade Helmet's planar reduction, resulting in me getting hit for 17 damage. Simple! For now, this is all we need to know to understand the planar damage buffing skill which Wolfgang has access to. Let us now begin explaining how this works and building up the damage formula. A weapon like a Dark Sword deals physical damage, which is multiplied by all the normal damage modifiers, like in Mighty Wolfgang and Spicy Volt Goat Jelly. But planar damage is separate damage, which is not affected by physical damage multipliers, like Mighty Wolfgang's double damage and the Spicy Volt Goat Jelly. So, Mighty Wolfgang with a Dark Sword deals 136 damage, Damage, but Mighty Wolfgang with the Shadow Reaper deals 94 damage, a little less than the Dark Sword, since the Void Reaper's physical damage is 38, which is multiplied by 2 by Wolfgang's Mighty modifier, but the 18 planar damage does not get increased, resulting in the 94 damage. This changes against the Shadow planar defense enemy, as the entire Dark Sword's 136 damage is reduced by their reduction down to 66.6, whereas the Shadow Reaper will deal 62.7 damage. We should know by now why this is the case. So now let's begin adding damage multipliers and building up this formula into the mess of numbers we will soon see. Wolfgang with no skills using a Shadow Reaper versus a Lunar Planar Defense enemy, the formula looks like this. Void Reaper's physical damage is multiplied by Wolfgang's 2x damage multiplier, and since you're 
using a shadow weapon versus a lunar enemy, you gain 1.1 times damage modifier on your physical and your planar damage, dealing a total of 67.6 damage. Okay, let's keep going. Same scenario as before, but now let's add the tier 3 shadow affinity, giving us another damage multiplier being 1.3 times against lunar enemies. Now the formula looks like this. 1.3 times multiplier is being applied to the physical and planar damage, dealing 83.06 damage. Now let's add the void cowl into the equation, which adds a flat 5 planar damage to the weapon's planar damage and increases your weapon's planar damage by 4 for every hit in your current hit streak, maxing out at 6 hits. So it's 24 extra planar damage from this effect and a flat 5 from the first effect, along with an extra 10% physical damage multiplier for using the void cowl with the shadow reaper, which are both the shadow aligned equipment pieces. So now on your 6th hit and above, the formula now looks like this, dealing 128.3 damage. And finally, let's add Wolfgang's skill, which we have been building up to this whole time. Each upgrade adds planar damage to the formula, so let's upgrade all the way to tier 5, granting 25 extra planar damage. This extra 25 is added here in the formula and gets affected by the affinity's 1.3 times damage multiplier and the 1.1 times damage multiplier by fighting a lunar enemy with a shadow weapon, dealing a grand total damage of 164.1. And just for fun, let's eat some spicy vulgar jelly and make sure that the lunar planar defense enemy is wet. Now the formula looks like this. The vulgar jelly versus a wet target gives our physical damage a 2.5 times damage multiplier, and the chili spice on the vulgar jelly grants another 1.2 times damage multiplier. These damage multipliers are only applied to your physical damage, so this is what the formula looks like, and the total damage is 225.8. Uh, and that's the whole complex formula. Uh, we could add a few more multipliers from other characters, such as Abigail hitting the enemy, causing them to be vexed, which causes 1.1 times damage multiplier. This is the entire formula formula annotated for you to use if you want. Um, yeah, this planar damage skill makes Wolfgang for sure still the best damage dealing character even versus planar enemies, as without this skill, default characters with planar weapons fighting planar enemies were significantly closer to Wolfgang's DPS than before. But now, like I said, Wolfgang has pulled back ahead. Uh, here's examples of various characters with no skills activated comparing using Dark Swords and Shadow Reapers with Void Cows versus normal enemies and planar enemies. You can see that due to the flat planar damage not being affected by both positive and negative character damage multipliers, the DPS DPS gap was significantly reduced between the best and the worst. Okay, it's actually kind of hard to tell in game how the numbers are changing due to the various damage model applies. So it's time for Excel Gaming. Uh, here we have a damage table where I swapped the order of what you previously saw on screen because it was badly ordered. Anyway, as you can see up here, we have four characters, Wolfgang, Wilson, and Wendy, all with no skills activated. And then Wolfgang with tier five mighty weapons skill enabled, but let's ignore him for now. Then looking down the table, we have four scenarios. Dark Sword versus normal enemy, Dark Sword versus shadow planar enemy, Shadow Reaper and Void Cal with a six hit streak versus normal enemy, and finally, Shadow Reaper, Void Cal, 6 hit streak versus Shadow Planar Defense of Me. Numbers are hard, so let's switch them to percentages. Ah, yes, yeah, so much easier to read now. All the percentages on each row are based on the percent of the no skill Mighty Wolfgang on that row. Starting to analyze the chart, it becomes a little more visually clear how the Planar weapons buff low damage multiplier characters. Wendy with a Dark Sword versus Normal Enemy dealt 37.5% the damage of Wolfgang. But as we look down the scenarios, you can see her proportional damage relative to Wolfgang keeps increasing. This is because Wendy is gaining the same flat damage as Wolfgang throughout the scenarios, but the physical damage and its multipliers, such as Wolfgang's mighty uh, multiplier, become less and less effective since, as we know, hitting a planar defense enemy with more physical damage simply causes the damage to get reduced even more. As such, Wendy goes from dealing 37.5% the damage of Wolfgang all the way up to 73.9% the damage of Wolfgang. Looking at Wilson, he starts by dealing 50% of the damage of Wolfgang all the way up to nearly 80% of Wolfgang's damage. Crazy that the non combat characters with no positive damage multipliers could get so close to the default best damage dealer in the game. But once we account for Wolfgang's new mighty weapon, skill at tier 5, it of course uh, does nothing to the scenarios where you're not using a planar weapon, since there is no weapon planar damage to add to, but when you look at the planar weapon scenarios, you'll see Wolfgang gets roughly non-proportionally better damage in the planar weapon scenarios as he got in the non-planar weapon scenarios. I say non-proportionally because since scenario 3 Wilson deals 18% more damage than no skill Wolfgang, while scenario 3 Wolfgang with mighty weapon skills deal 19.1% more damage. If it were proportional to before, it would double, but uh, that isn't the case. All this to show that the introduction of planar weapons and enemies closed the damage gap between low damage and high damage characters. But now, due to Wolfgang's mighty weapons skill, that gap has been increased again, but not as much as it used to be. Anyway, I love spreadsheets and now so do you. And yes, I cut another three to four paragraphs talking about the spreadsheet. You're welcome. And that's Wolfgang's skill tree. As for his recommended skill tree, I would spend the first two points on the coaching whistle to then unlock leg day for the early game speed bonus. You're not actually going to 
going to use the coaching whistle, you, but you need to unlock the coaching whistle to unlock leg day. The next three points I would spend on the tier 3 Lunar Affinity for damage against Shadow Creatures and every other Shadow Aligned enemy. Next, I would spend three points to unlock the new dumbbells and the double damage from the throne dumbbells. And yes, this is specifically to use the Ice Bell strategy versus Crab King. That's how good it is at saving time and resources. Uh, the next five points I'd put on Mighty Weapons for the planner damage, but if you're not going to be using planner weapons, this is absolutely useless. And then the last two points I would spend on Troll Workout tier 1 and 2 for generic work speed increase. I really wanted to utilize Push the Limits, but it just doesn't really make sense for me to use it, since using a piggyback applies 0.9 times speed modifier, which is what I use a lot of the time. But it's completely mitigated by being mighty, which is a plus for Push the Limits, but it's also pretty much fully mitigated by using Leg Day, which only costs 2 points to unlock, along with giving me a speed buff when not using the piggyback and in normal mode. So it made more sense for me to unlock Leg Day and ignore Push the Limits. Anyway, you can expect me to put the speed running tree into practice when I get around to doing my new Wolfgang Ooh Boss Run after I make my next video, which will be the Wormwood Skill Tree Guide. It's a good thing I waited too, since Wormwood Skill Tree was changed a week after the original update hit the live game. So we'll check out his new skill tree next. Also, the Cult of the Lamb crossover update happened, and it is a very small and cute update, which I will very quickly go over because it is so small. Fishing in the Oasis, you have a chance of getting a trinket called a Red Crown. Feeding this to Antlion, you will receive three blueprints. The first being a new flooring, which is the same as Cobblestone, except it looks different. Very nice. Second is another flooring, except it's super golden and it looks pretty neat. And lastly, you can craft a new fire pit, which is really expensive. But after upgrading it twice, it's basically like a normal fire pit, except it has a small sunny aura. Oh, and of course, go to the Critter Den in the Mosaic Farm to adopt a cute little Yucas with the Cult of the Lamb skin. Wow, so cute! And uh, if you listen really closely, when you pet the lamb, it says, wow. Yep, you'll never unhear that now. <laughs> oh, and they added some new skins for some items, being for the Dark Sword giving us the Lamb's Blade, which has a cool smoke effect when you hit with it. Then two different skins for the regular chest, a new Twitch drop skin for the Potted Fern, which you can get by watching me on Twitch before the 5th of September. <laughs> and of course the Yuka skin, which we already saw. And the best part of this update is, you have a higher chance of getting your first Desert Goggles blueprint from the Oasis than before. Whoa! Oh my goodness! Anyway, I might make a video playing Cult of the Lamb for the first time. Let me know what you think about that. Anyway, uh, subscribe and like, and thanks for watching. Please do click the link in the description to check out the uh, Jakeosaurus desk mouse mat desk mat thing. Yes, wow, cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, just check it out. See if you like it. Buy one, buy one for something else. For someone else, why not? I also have rolled out official uh, perks for channel memberships on YouTube. Um, so the first tier is quite cheap and also just gives you emojis and icons, but the second tier gives you 48 hour early access to videos. So at the time of recording this, there was exactly one channel member who was already a channel member and they got access to this video. So if you want early access to uh, future videos, 48 hours early access, then yeah, become a tier two channel member, a level two channel member. And then level three is a at least once per month play session with me uh, in Discord. So you know, if you're interested in supporting the channel even more than just watching my videos, go ahead and get yourself a channel membership and you'll get a bunch of perks to go along with it. Thank you very much for considering channel membership. Leave a comment in case you, I missed anything, but I hope that I did not miss anything, but if I did, you'll find out because I'll put it in the pinned comment. Also, leave any tips for Wolfgang in the comments for others to see. Next video will be the Wormwood Skill Tree Guide, like I said, so leave tips and strategies for that for a chance to be featured in that video. And thanks for watching. Make sure to go buy a desk slash mouse mat. I'm leaving now. Goodbye.